What is good y'all? Welcome to the Dre Clipper Hands Academy. And today we're gonna be doing a high tape around my guy Alex here. We're gonna keep the length on his curls, but let's get right into it. So you always wanna start out by combing the client's hair and just make sure it's laying nicely before you get into it. So we actually just already washed his hair and combed it out. So now we're gonna get into the taper. So for a high taper, I like to establish my bald line at the top of the arch and where the ear connects to the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my trimmer. In this case, this is the Snap FX. And I'm gonna start right at the top of the arch and bring that all the way through. And then I'm gonna flip that trimmer around and bald the rest of it out. And yes, my trimmers are zero gaps. We're gonna shave off his little baby beard here. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and follow it up with the foil shaver. And this is just gonna get it closer to the skin and add a couple days to the taper. And you'll see as I get towards that line, I'm flicking out with the shaver. I'm not going right up into it. And this is so I don't create another another line. So for the next step of the taper, I'm gonna come in with the lever open on my clipper and we're gonna go up about a finger's width here. So I'm coming in lever open once again. And like I said, a finger's width, cause you wanna make sure you stretch that taper out. So that way, you know, it looks blended. So now to get rid of the line in between the open and bod, I'm gonna go ahead and close that lever all the way. And I'm gonna tap at that line. Not being scared to go into it because you have to cut some hair off. Now we're gonna open it a quarter of the way. Now we're gonna go halfway. And now we'll go all the way just to reestablish that open guideline. And that should pretty much get rid of that line. And now we're gonna do the same thing with our one guard lever open. We're gonna go up a finger's width once again. Staying real clean here, making sure I brush or comb in between each pass of the clipper. Now to get rid of that line in between, I'm gonna go ahead and close that lever all the way. And this isn't gonna get rid of it fully, but it will lighten it up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my half guard with the lever halfway. And I'm gonna attack this line in between. And we're using the corner of that blade in order to get into these areas. Now close it all the way. And now there's some light weight right here, so I'm gonna go uh, fully open again. And I'm utilizing the corner of the blade here in order to get into those hard to reach areas. Now the biggest guard we are going to use is our two guard with the lever all the way open. And with this, we're not trying to create a harsh line. We're gonna come in with that two guard and kind of flare out. And this is gonna help us maintain that weight towards the top of his curls. So again, two guard lever open. And you can even hold the curls up slightly. And we're gonna come in with that two guard and flare out. Oh, let's take your ear with me. And in that flick out motion, it should blend into that length, you know, pretty seamlessly without leaving any lines. So right here, you'll be able to see that scoop out motion a little better. So I'm just coming in and flicking out. And now to lighten up this line a little more, I'm gonna close that two guard. 
and we're just lightening it up as much as possible. Now after using that two guard, we're gonna go ahead and blend down. So under that two guard, we're gonna come in at that one and a half, lever all the way open. And we're gonna attack this weight right here. And again, we're really using that corner to break this weight up because we don't wanna create any more lines. Now we'll close it halfway, or a quarter of the way. And you'll see I'm combing as I do so. Now we'll close it all the way. And now to really break you know, this weight up and kind of blend it in, we're gonna do some clipper over comb. So I'm gonna come in with that comb and flare out just a little bit. And then any hair sticking out of these teeth, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of with my clipper. So I'm coming in right here, and then I'm gonna come in lever open with my clipper. And we're just gonna, you know, get rid of these hairs and try to make this transition as clean as possible. And now I'm using the corner of that blade once again to so go ahead and detail. What using the corner of the blade does is allow you to get into those areas where you use the two and you use the one and it allows you to go in there and break that up. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to his neck taper. And now for the neck taper, I'm gonna show you another way to go ahead and establish that bald line. So instead of coming in with that trimmer and pressing it in, we can come in with our clipper closed and start off that bald line that way first. So we're gonna start that bald line right here, a little below the bottom of his ear. And what this is gonna do is allow us to get rid of that first line in between the bald and open a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to get rid of. And now we'll go ahead and grab our trimmer. And now we're gonna bald this hair out right below the top of that line. Making sure not to go all the way up. So as you can see, we went ahead and bought it out nicely. So now we're gonna follow it up with our, our shaver. So we'll come in with our Babyliss, you know, single foil shaver. And we're even gonna stay lower with this shaver than we did with the trimmer so we don't create another line. So I'm really utilizing that flick out motion here. Being gentle, letting the shaver do the work because I don't want to cause any, you know, any irritation or limit it as much as possible. And now we can get into the rest of the taper. So just like we did on the side, we're gonna do in the back. So like I said, we're gonna go up about a finger's width here with that lever open. Staying real clean, real consistent, trusting that process here. So after we go ahead and set in that lever open, <clears throat> as you would guess, we'll go ahead and close that lever all the way. And now we're gonna come in closed and we'll open up that lever little by little. So we're closed here. Now we're a quarter of the way. Now we're halfway. And now we'll go all the way. And we're just gonna tap at that, that guideline once again. Cause we wanna make sure that our guidelines are clean and noticeable. And what that's gonna help you do is not get lost in the blend, which is something I really struggled with when learning. And the next step, we're gonna do our one guard lever open. And just like we did with that lever open, we're gonna go up a finger's width once again. And we're just gonna make clean guidelines here.
Now we'll go ahead and close that lever all the way. And we're gonna stay right below that open. And this is just to lighten this line up. Still brushing as I said in my lines here. And we're gonna come back to this last line here, but now we're gonna continue to blend up. And what I wanted to do, what I like to do is come in with my comb for anything above a one and a half, and then anything a one and a half below, I use my brush. So that's why I'm gonna grab my comb when I come in with this two guard lever open, just because we're working with longer hair here. So I'm gonna come in and flick out. And I'm just coming off the shape of his head here. As you can see, I'm still doing that flick out motion. And now I came back to my brush because I'm gonna use my one and a half with that lever open in order to start blending down. <clears throat> so I'm lever open here. And I'm just leaving off or picking up where I left off with that two guard open. So I always like to start the process of getting rid of my lines with that lever open first because it gives us room for air, right? Because if you come in close and take off too much, you can't put the hair back on. But if you come in with that lever open and you need to take more hair off, you can always do that by closing the lever like I'm about to do here. So now you'll see this line start to disappear slowly but surely. And now to get rid of this last guideline here, we're gonna go ahead and grab our half guard with that lever open again, because I always like to start off open like I had mentioned. And now we're just gonna work at this line here. Now we'll close that lever halfway. Now we'll close it all the way. And we're gonna try our best to finish off this blend, but if not, we can always come back in in detail. So we're still working with that lever closed. Now I'm going to open it up all the way and I'm going to use that corner to come into this area here. And when I say the, the detailing portion of the haircut, what I'm looking for is any dark spots in the blend that I can go in and break up. Now I'm going to come in with the corner of my blade, no guard, lever open. And like I said, we're looking for any dark areas that need to go, we need to go back and be detailed. And now I think we're safe to move on to the other side of the taper. So now we're gonna come in with the trimmer once again. And just like we did on the other side, we're gonna start at the top of his arch and where the ear kind of connects to the head. So I'm gonna grab my trimmer. I'm gonna establish that line. Now we can go ahead and bob this out. And this client usually gets a lower taper, but in this scenario, I suggested a high one. Reason being was because I think with people that have like a small space in between, you know, their hairline and where their arch is, when it's smaller, I think high tapers tend to look a little better. So that's why we went ahead and went with the high taper today. So now I'm gonna come in with my shaver again. And we're gonna take this all the way down to the skin. Remember flicking out as I get towards the top. And another thing I find that helps me not create as harsh of lines is I like to pull the skin or stretch it. So that's what I'm doing here and I'm flicking out. And now once again, Lever all the way open, about a finger's width. So 
we made our clean guideline and I will close that lever all the way and come in and tag that line and make sure you're not just like tapping at the line make sure you actually cut above the line in order to blend it out because remember we're blending up so now I'll open it a quarter of the way now the next step is going to be our one guard with that lever open again we're coming right above that And this fading system that I'm showing you guys that I've been repeating, it feels like the whole video. Um, I pretty much use this system on any hair texture and any hairstyle. And that's what it's all about, man, is really finding a system that works for you and then mastering it. So now I close that one guard all the way and we're just lining up that line right here. Now above that one guard, that you see that light line, we're gonna leave this for last. We're gonna grab our two guard lever open. And again, we're coming in and we're flaring out. And coming off the shape of his head here. And I'm combing it down. Not the curls, but just the portion that's being blended. And now after we did the open, we'll close it all the way and we'll lighten up this line right here. Now to blend out this line right here in between the one open and that two guard, we're gonna come in with that one and a half open. And we're working at this line. So I went ahead and closed it all the way and we're just blending as much as we can here. As you can see, we pretty much got rid of it and all we have left is that last line we saved for last. Now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this line right here with our half guard lever open once again. So now after we do the open, I'm gonna close it halfway. See, it starts to blend out. Now we'll go all the way once again using that corner. So we're gonna do some clipper over comb. So come in with that comb and again, lever open. And we're just getting rid of any of the hair sticking out of those teeth. And that is how you do a side taper. So now we'll go ahead and line up behind the ear. So when it comes to lining up behind the ear, I don't like there to be a lot of weight right where the line is. So I always like to debog this area just a little bit. So I wanna go ahead and separate those curls so I don't cut them and comb just that part down. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do some clipper over comb behind the ear. So I'm gonna come in with that comb. And again, we're still building shape that kind of flares out. So I'm gonna come in, flare out, and then just like we did on the side, we're gonna get rid of it with our clipper. So we're lever open on our clipper here. And we're just trying to shorten this area up so we can get a nice, nice crisp line. So I like to start the process of lining up uh, the nape area by starting at the top almost always. So I wanna go ahead and pull the ear down gently, not too hard. And we're gonna establish this line right here, making sure we don't go up too high. So I'm just following that natural round shape that it has. So now we're just gonna bring that down all the way through to the bottom of his nape. So I wanna make sure that I comb these hairs down just follow the natural shape of this area.
And yes, my trimmers are a zero gap, but I make sure that they're not, you know, too rough on the client's skin. So now we'll go ahead and recomb it to make sure we got all those hairs once again. Now we're gonna get all those little hairs behind the ear here. Bought out the rest of the bottom, all that little peach fuzz. So now I'm gonna go ahead and debulk behind his ear on this side as well, making sure I separate those curls. And I'm gonna do it with my trimmer here just so I can show you how to do it with this as well. So still coming in with that comb and just getting rid of all those little hairs. Same right here. Giving us a nice clean canvas to go ahead and line up. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna start at the top of his ear. Get that nice clean line. And now we'll bring that all the way down. I'm just gonna follow this line. You can automatically see that taper really start to come together. That's looking super clean. And you can also see that once we lined it up, it brung out any imperfections in the taper. So we're gonna go ahead and debulk some of this weight right here. So I'm gonna try to do that with some trimmer over comb first. So I'm gonna come in with my trimmer. And we're gonna try to debulk this area. Brush it all back down. And that trimmer over comb wasn't getting it as good as I wanted it to, so I grabbed my one guard open. And we're just detailing. So now we're gonna get into the lineup. And I always like to have a section of the hairline, um, you know, portioned off from the curls on top, unless the client asks otherwise, because it allows us to get a nice clean line that I feel lasts longer. So we're gonna go ahead and comb that down. So what the key is when having a t uh, doing a tapered hairline is you wanna make sure that the tapered hairline stays the same shade of darkness as the curls on top. So that way when you take the clips out and the hair falls, it all looks like it matches. So some hairline prep that I like to do um, is I like to grab an alcohol. In this case, my alcohol is mixed with my aftershave, so it's red. But I like to spray it on the hairline first and that's gonna act as um, what's gonna strip like all the oils off. So when we go ahead and line it up, it's a nice clean line. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe that alcohol off and all those oils. And now I'm gonna come in with a light hairspray here. And this is just to hold the hairs in place. I wanna spray it very lightly, not super hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and lightly spray it. And now what I wanna do to go ahead and dry everything up is I'm gonna come in with my blow dryer on the cool setting, all right? You don't wanna put it on the hot because you don't wanna make the client sweat or produce any more oils. So we're gonna go low and put it on the coolest setting possible. And we're just gonna go ahead and dry his, for his hairline. So for the lineup, I wanna go ahead and start in the middle and then work towards either my left or right. But in this case, we're gonna move towards his right, uh, or his left, my right. So we're gonna start right here in the middle, making sure that we keep it as natural as possible, but at the same time, getting it as sharp as possible. So we established that line in the middle and now we're just gonna bring that all the way through. turn ahead a little bit now we're gonna come into this corner being very careful here I want to go ahead and comb it out and we're gonna line up that box and now for some balk that's right here in the corner I'm gonna do some trimmer over comb 
Let's slide it up. And now after we recomb it, I'm gonna go ahead and reline it as well. Now we're gonna pick up where we left off, right in the middle. And we're just gonna move it over to his left side. Staying real calm with this part. A lot of people start to panic when they do the hairline. But you wanna stay as calm as possible. Take your time, don't rush this part. For a lot of people, this is the most important part of the haircut. What would you say is the most important part of the haircut? Um, I don't know, for me it's like, I mean, if I gotta pick one that I would say emphasize, depending on the hairstyle, I would say lineup, cause you could get away with a bad fade. But for me personally, I feel like they all complement each other. So if one's off, it's all off, you know? So now we're gonna go ahead and re reline it. But if you got room to mess up on one thing, maybe a little bit is the fade. Especially in the back, because most people don't look at the back of the haircut. They just look at the front and the sides. Mm -hmm. So after we go ahead and line this side up, we might need to go back and detail the taper just a little bit in this area, I can see. So now I'm coming back to my clipper and I'm gonna just detail this area close to his hairline to make it blend a little better. Not too much though, just a little bit. I grab my one guard here. I'm gonna attack this a little bit. So now to go ahead and take this haircut to a whole nother level, that Instagram quality that we all want, I'm gonna come in with my airbrush. Now a common question that you guys asked me on the YouTube channel is what's the mixture? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I use for the mixture, but in a separate video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I mix it. So the mix that I use in my airbrush is the alcohol and then just some Kiss Express. And I like to mix it in a bottle like this that has a cap so I can go ahead and shake it, but I usually do one ounce Kiss, two ounce alcohol. And then I go ahead and mix it and that's the mixture I use in my airbrush. But I'll break that down in a later video, so let's get back to the cut. So I'm just gonna use a business card as the outline for his hairline. It'll keep it, you know, real simple, real clean. So I'm gonna come in with my card and just place it on the area we already lined up. And I like to start off by spraying it lightly and then adding more if needed. Cause you wanna keep it, you know, as natural looking as you can while at the same time, make, same time making it look sharp and crispy. And as you can see, we're not covering anything up, we're just enhancing the haircut, right? Same thing on this side, right on that line. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this haircut to a whole nother level, which doesn't even look possible, but we're gonna hit him with the razor and really make his hairline crisp. So we'll go ahead and recline our client, ready? So you guys always ask me, Dre, what razor do you use? So I use a Turkish blade razor. In this case, it's Faded Culture, shout out Faded Culture. But I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. So I grab a regular set of blades, I break it in half, and now I'll go ahead and take the blade out. Being careful here because when I first started doing this, you know, it was I definitely cut myself a few times, but we're gonna go ahead and break off the corners here. So I go ahead and break the corner off. Put that in our, our hazard container, break the other corner off. And now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna slide that right in there. And sometimes for that last little piece, you gotta, you know, kind of bang it in with the with the brush. But it gives us a nice, slim, slightly exposed razor, which I like a lot when doing lines. So when using the razor, you always want to make sure that you stretch the skin. 
in the opposite direction of what you're using it. So in this case, I'm coming towards his hairline. So I wanna pull with my finger away from his hairline. And this is gonna help create tension on the skin. So we don't go ahead and cut him. So we'll go ahead and pull. We're coming with that razor. Being very, you know, light-handed here. You don't wanna press down too hard with the blade because at the end of this day, this thing could definitely do some damage. And we're gonna do the same thing on this box area. We're gonna pull in the opposite direction of it. And I'm gonna attack those little hairs here. And with that hairline prep, it should come out a slight ash line, and that's good. That means he had clean skin because we went ahead and wiped him down with the razor. Same thing on this side, staying real clean. Super clean. So now to go ahead and finish off a good haircut, you always wanna finish it with a good style. You know, if the client wants it, but in this case, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it. So with curls, I always just like to wet them first because it takes product way better. And in this case, we're gonna use a light gel here, pretty similar to a leave-in conditioner because it doesn't flake up or make his hair white. You just wanna emulsify it in your hands a little bit and then just go ahead and work it into the hair. And it's always better to add more product to the back than in the front because that's usually the area that needs it most. And now to go ahead and dry the hair <clears throat> just a little bit. I don't want it fully dry. I want it to kind of air dry because the curls tend to look better that way. Is I'm going to grab a diffuser and put it on my blow dryer. And the reason, the, the reason we use a diffuser as opposed to just a blow dryer straight up is because the diffuser just disperses the heat without blowing his hair everywhere and causing it to be frizzy. So I wanna go ahead and put it on a medium setting with medium heat. And I don't wanna to touch the curls too much. I kinda of just wanna let them sit in place and dry them that way. All right, y'all, this is the cut. We did a clean, high taper on the front and back into the curls. I hope that this video helps you in some way, shape, or form. And if you watched it all the way through, man, I'm proud of you. But I will catch y'all on the next one. See y'all there.